we are upgrading the world and our ability to upgrade the world is being upgraded as well. Think about it. After the birth of the universe, matter, self-organized in stars and after generations of stars uh, exploding and reforming, planets were formed and on one of these planets, life evolved. And then life adapted progressively to various conditions and species changed. And during billions of years, solutions to the various complex problems were developed blindly. And now we are developing solutions to our problems with our open eyes, being able not only to incorporate the feedback immediately in our surroundings as it Im is impacting our individual ability to, for example, uh, transfer our genes in the next generation, and as that is being incorporated in the vast number of experiments carried out in parallel, but also by being able and look farther. What other experiments are being carried out? What are the parameters of those experiments and how the outcome of those experiments is impacting our evaluation of the probability that our experiment will result in our desired outcome. This kind of ability is very, very novel and very, very different from what we have been able to observe anywhere else. And we are now not only holding and treasuring this ability, refining it and uh, incorporating it in uh, our own behaviors and ways we learn, we teach, we uh, analyze and synthesize knowledge, but we are also incorporating this ability in the world itself around us. That is the kind of upgrade that the world is now is being subjected to by our will. A few years ago, uh, a, a very powerful uh, article came out with the title, Software is Eating the World. And this article spoke about how startups and large companies are using software to achieve unprecedented results and an advantage compared to other companies that are not software-based that is difficult or impossible to bridge. And what I am formulating here is that this is not simply applying to the world of uh, our economy, but it is literally applying to matter as it is organizing itself. Because the adaptability and the ability to solve complex problems in a world of software-defined programmable matter is going to be superior to a degree that cannot be bridged through any other means. This kind of superiority is going to keep manifesting itself in all kinds of different and unexpected ways. The programmability of matter has always been a feature of the world around us because whether we are talking about chemical reactions that in the presence of a catalyst occur uh, with a much greater uh, probability at the much lower energy levels than otherwise, or 
the fact that a certain type of molecule that we call DNA is able to duplicate itself in the presence of uh, the uh, right type of uh, soup of elementary components and the fact that this kind of molecule is, as it is being reproduced, expressing what we call our bodies, the phenotype corresponding to genotype, the expression as the molecule is giving rise to the organisms, that has been already a degree of programmability of matter around us. But today, we are really bringing solutions to the world that are becoming adept at re-evaluating their own nature and changing that nature in order to be better than they were yesterday, without waiting for chemical processes through billions of years, uh, finding new ways uh, of synthesizing certain elements uh, that can take advantage of certain catalysts, without waiting for life through millions of years to uh, come up uh, via chance with a new species whose molecule at the basis, its DNA, expresses a body that is fit for a particular purpose. No, this kind of programmable matter is able to reconfigure itself to be fit for a given purpose in a manner of months, days, hours. In a manner of months, if we include in the system our own ingenuity and our desire to come up with a new generation of that particular object, living or non-living makes no difference. As we select uh, a given type of uh, uh, animal, breeders, that won't happen in a matter of months, but uh, in a few years, yes. Or as we design our next generation smartphones and the new capabilities of the smartphones are now better than the previous generation. And that smartphone obviously is hardware, but the reason it is different and it is better is not because the hardware is fundamentally different, but because of the software capabilities that have been incorporated. And if we design the hardware in a new way, then the improvements can happen rather than in a matter of a few years or a few months, they can happen in a manner of few weeks or few minutes. Because we are already observing around us objects that have implicit abilities that are made powerful via software upgrades that are installed and that express this new capability. A couple of examples. We have powerful eyes in our smartphones, the photo cameras, and under certain circumstances, these are better than our biological eyes. Has it ever happened to you that uh, some written information, a, a sign maybe, on the street, uh, across, and you didn't want to walk uh, uh, in the traffic, was too small to be read? And at that point, you pointed your phone and you dragged with your fingers in order to increase enlarge the size of the sign to be able to read it. My eyes can't zoom 
can yours, but our phone's zoom is such compared with its resolution that it enables us to see in real time something that otherwise we wouldn't see. Or has it ever happened that you took a photo in the dusk and your biological eyes were already settling in the nighttime vision when colors start to disappear because the way that our eyes work when we are adapting to lower light conditions, the particular sensors in our eyes that are adept at recording color don't work that well. But the photo that you took your that you took with your smartphone was not only well lit, but it was also full of color, even if your natural perception wasn't able to record those colors. Or when a new piece of software is released and the kind of 3D photo that the camera is now able to take with multiple exposures or high dynamic range or um, the uh, ability to uh, create mosaics and panorama and, and other types of magical representations of the world, these become possible with the same hardware, radically broadening the possibilities. And the other example is another piece of hardware, a computer in a class of objects that we didn't think of as computers in the past, uh, our automobiles and the most explicitly uh, information-based automobile that we have today, the Tesla car, where periodically a new version of the Tesla software is released, delivered to hundreds of thousands of cars wirelessly, installed overnight, and the owner of the car the morning after finds new capabilities in the car. Capabilities that, for example, give the car um, a longer range. When did it ever happen that a car could from one day to another acquire the ability to go farther without any harder change? Or the ability to generate substantial economic value to its owner as it is going to happen when soon enough Tesla is going to turn on Tesla network which is a car sharing network and it may be impacted in certain ways by the pandemic because we will be less prone in sharing our cars with others and I don't know what exactly the adaptation required is going to be. But whether through the ability of somebody else to get into the car and drive it, or, which is also an additional software upgrade expected soon enough, the full self-driving ability of the Tesla car so that somebody could sit elsewhere rather than in the driver's seat and the car will bring the person to her destination, well, these are completely novel functions of a software-defined object. And today, only the most advanced companies are thinking about their products like this. But these are just the seeds being born of a huge revolution as software defined objects are going to dominate the future with their unique ability to stay fit in complex changing conditions, delivering value to a network of ecosystem participants and outcompeting any alternative 
solution. In more and more sectors, this is going to be the paradigm and any sector dominated by players that are slow in adopting this approach is going to be disrupted by new entrants, whether they are already in that industry or they are now coming from completely unexpected areas. And then, of course, with the fairly recent ability of software writing itself, where it is not um, human coders anymore that painstakingly line by line are writing the, the code on keyboards, but the role of the software engineers is to shepherd the data and the evolution of algorithms as billions and tens and hundreds of billions of parameters are adjusting themselves in order to generate the desired functionality, that is the power of machine learning and those objects that incorporate their programmable features through machine learning are going to be more and more capable of expressing an even greater degree of adaptability, both in terms of how far they can go, but also in terms of how rapidly they can achieve that. So you have to refine your perception, your pattern recognition, in order to home in, whether we are talking about the simplest of the examples today, a smart speaker that has tens of thousands of abilities that were not there when it was put on the market originally, because it is a software defined object something that was, was used to be called simply a car. And now it is a supercomputer on wheels that is going to re-evaluate what it can do constantly through our prodding. Or communication devices that are gamifying our behaviors through the tens and hundreds of unexpected applications that we install and use daily on them. These are just the first examples. And as we keep upgrading the world around us, your ability to recognize and to take advantage of this is going to be crucial as an individual, as an entrepreneur or a, a leader in your business, but as a thinker in a society of tomorrow.